so far in further integration. We've only had a little bit of time. We're kind of at this beginning spot where we're taking two unit and extension one integration and just kind of widening the envelope a little bit, okay? So the kinds of things we looked at are um, identities that involve, sorry, integrals that involve trig identities, regular trig identities, such as, what identities can we use? Double angle. Yeah, it's got a name. It's got a name. The Pythagorean identity and all its all its versions. Okay, so you can use those in a whole variety of contexts. Um, in two unit extension one, you'll often be given a clue. In our context, it's kind of like, no, no, you you should be able to work out which one it is. What do we do after just the regular trig integrals? What's after trig? Irregular. We look at inverse trig, right? So we've been doing inverse trig recently. So I didn't go back over that in detail, but I showed some of the like trickier substitutions that you could do. We did trig, we did inverse trig. Yesterday, I introduced, um, well, introduced, I refreshed your memory on logs, right? And I showed there were some algebraic tricks you could do to things like this. Do you want to say, look, what I have over here, uh, I can't work with it, but if I massage it algebraically, I can get it into a form and out pops a log. Like the other one, okay? Now, we're going to continue on that today, but we need this piece. So, partial fractions we looked at under polynomials. Let's review this, right? This guy here, if I just think about it as an integration problem, is um, it causes me issues. Why? Why can't I just launch into this as a standard form? Why, what would I need? Yeah. You need to have like a quadratic at the bottom and then a complete Okay, so um, if I have a quadratic here, right, I can treat that as, what am I gonna treat that as? Okay. It'll turn into a t inverse, right? Now, interestingly, I can go in that direction, but there's an alternative path that I can take. If I can take this quadratic denominator and separate it out into two fractions, both with linear denominators, then I can deal with it as a log. Okay? So let's do that. We're going to need, and you can do this over on the right-hand side first. I'm going to say let 2 on this fraction here, right? Let it equal 2. Now, can we remember how does partial fractions work? What are we going to use on the right-hand side? A on the first factor, right? plus b on the other factor, okay? Just while we're looking at this, having just written this down, suppose this was not x minus three, suppose it was x squared minus three, okay. x squared minus three. How would that be different over here? A x plus three? Yeah, I'm gonna have, uh, if this denominator here, if my partial fraction ends up with, um, actually, uh, maybe x squared plus three, because I can't rationalize, sorry, I can't factorize that any further in the real domain. If it was x squared plus 3, what I want up here, the a and the b, they really stand for the remainder after you've divided through. And of course, a quadratic um, divisor will have a linear remainder. But in this case, it's all kind of nice. Two linear divisors, therefore two constant remainders. Okay, so now what do I do with that? Where am I going to go? <clears throat> yeah, I, I want to combine these because if I get the, the denominators the same, then I can compare the coefficients on the numerators, okay? So this is how it's looking. Um, I've got that. I'll write the original fraction one last time. And now I can say, look, my denominators are now, I don't have to worry about them. I can say, look, that equals two, and then I have a choice. I can either evaluate this at choice values of x, like leave it in its factorized form, and then for instance, what values might I choose for x? Once I've, once I've canceled these, what values might I choose? I could choose one, right? That'll leave me with this guy. And then I'll choose three, which will leave me with this guy, right? So either of those will work. You've got that alternative, or the other way, which we've seen before, which is to simply compare coefficients. Yeah. So what what statement am I going to make out of this if I um, comparing coefficients? What statement am I going to make? Okay. So I've got these two guys, the x terms, which correspond to the zero x over here. So I'll say a plus b equals zero and Perfect. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and solve. Can you just go ahead and solve that for me? <coughs> plus or minus one? Yeah. A, which one's which? A is plus one and B is minus 
Okay, excellent. Can we just confirm that that would be the case by going back and trying that other method? If I said <coughs> x equals 3 at this point, what would happen? This guy would disappear. So I'm going to have a times 2, 2a, which is 2. Perfect. Now, I'm not going to bother confirming for that. You see how it works. Okay. Excellent. Now that I've done that, I can say instead of this fraction, right, I can write this as the integral of what I have 1 over x minus 3. And then I've got minus the other fraction. Right? Minus 1 over x minus 1 dx. And so you can see we've taken something which is kind of like ugh, icky and using these polynomial techniques, this is trivial, isn't it? What am I going to get? x minus log of x minus 3. indefinite. Now, be because I've got two logs here, um, there's no reason why I can't simplify this a little bit further and say this is actually log of... Excellent. Done. Okay. 